Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. If you're new to my channel, this is Fiona at Drawings in a Drawer and here we discuss everything watercolour. If you think that is something that might interest you, maybe you would like to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you will know every time I upload a new video, which is usually on a Sunday. And if you find you like this video and want to binge watch all my other videos on YouTube and leave an avalanche of comments, feel free. Today I'm going to show you a little bit about my learning from the Master Series, which I host over on Patreon. And in each episode we explore an artist's style and try to repaint one of their masterpieces and see what we can learn from it. Now the challenge is that most of these masterpieces were painted with oils, whereas I am going to approach them with watercolour. We've already painted Klimt, Frida Kahlo and Dante Gabriel Rossetti and this time I have two new artists and one of them is Dermier. You can see me painting the girl with the pearl earring here. And the next one was one I had never heard of and I'm so grateful to my patrons for coming up with all these interesting suggestions and it's Rick Walters. You will be able to see the process for that piece later on in this video. to say that painting uh, The Girl with a Pearl Earring by 17th century Dutch artist uh, Vermeer has been probably the scariest of the Learning from the Masters episodes. I mean, who am I to paint The Girl with a Pearl Earring, right? But at the same time, I think you have to approach this exercise with a little bit of lack of seriousness. You have to not take yourself too seriously, otherwise you will never be able to do it without so much self-criticism uh, that it would just ruin the whole idea of this project. Here I was just showing you the problem I have with lighting in my studio slash guest room. The lighting never seems to be right for filming. Sometimes when you're painting a masterpiece like this, it's more about discovering new things about the artists and his style than really trying to replicate it because you know that's just uh, impossible of course. Vermeer was such an enigmatic character and uh, this painting reflects that. We have this girl looking at us, we have no idea where she is because we have this flat background that gives nothing away. She is surrounded by rich yellows and blues that have something exotic, but then her face is very simple and pure. The attention is drawn immediately to her beautiful eyes and her left eyes is in the centre of the painting. In fact, composition was extremely important to Vermeer. He would sometimes eliminate elements like the leg of a chair just for the sake of composition. There's so much mystery in this painting. Some call it the Mona Lisa of the North. We wonder who this woman is, who this girl is. Is she turning towards us or is she turning away from us? Her lips are parted like she's about to talk to us. But Vermeer gives away very little information. We have no idea of her setting. It is extremely likely that she was someone from the middle class because that was the subject that he was painting at the time. And also it is well known that Vermeer did not have the money to buy such a huge uh, pearl earring. So it was probably made of glass or it was probably made of tin. And I actually thought this while I was painting it, that it looked to me like it was made of metal. And composition and mystery are probably the key things I take away from Vermeer's style. 
or that I understood about his style. And I definitely think that it's really important to think about where we're going to position something in a painting rather than placing it randomly. It's very often good to have it off to the side. And I think Vermeer was very good at this. And of course, over on Patreon, we discuss this much more in depth, where we have full length narrated tutorials, including, of course, the Learning from the Masters series. And all this information will be linked down below in the description box if you want to find me on Instagram as well, on Skillshare, and anywhere else you want to connect with me, you will be able to find all the information down there and I would love for you to join our community. You can join our Facebook group Fiona Di Pinto's Watercolour Students that will also be linked down below if you want to share work that you did and it was in some way inspired by one of my YouTube videos or one of my tutorials. You can get feedback over there from me and other students. Something else I learned painting this was that watercolour is not suitable for flat black backgrounds. It's too streaky. Initially I picked up this black ink by Windsor & Newton but then I couldn't open the bottle. So I picked up this designer's gouache. You can see the white is missing. Big surprise. I use it so much for highlights. And I used this for the background and of course it really worked wonderfully because it's so flat and opaque that it gave the perfect effect. This is a painting that is so very little suitable for watercolour that I think overall it was a win what I managed to obtain. I think there is so much contrast in this piece that it really is difficult to replicate with this medium. So I have to say that I feel I have obtained uh, something that is beyond my expectations. So this was definitely a positive experience. second painting is by Rick Walters, a Belgian artist, and I did not know him. I, he was suggested to me by one of my patrons, and thank you so much. I then put up a poll and my patrons got to vote between uh, a number of different artists, and we ended up picking this one and the girl with the pearl earring for our full-length tutorials. Well, as soon as I saw this piece, I fell in love with it and I had to paint it. It reminded me so much of Matisse's Red Room. I think it's called Harmony in Red. And I've always wanted to paint that painting. Excuse my pun. By the way, I want to apologise if I'm butchering this artist's name. I'm not sure how it's pronounced, so I will say Walters, but I'm not 100% certain that's how you say it. Anyway, I feel I've learned so much through painting this piece. His style was so expressive. You can see all the brush strokes he loved, leaving blank pieces of canvas showing through. The way he left his paintings almost scribbled, almost unfinished, allows the viewer's eye to kind of finish the story and fill in the blanks, which I really loved.
using the flat square brush from most of the painting helped me to remain expressive because it's kind of hard to go into detail or be too precise when you're using a square brush uh, for most of the painting. With this artist, I really loved how things were hinted at, how there's so much going on in the setting, but everything is almost uh, like a reflection of what it could be like a memory that is almost fading or something that was glimpsed for a second and has disappeared. I think the little boy with his scribbly jacket and his face that is almost just a stain, a blob, are my favourite part of this painting. If you want to learn more about this piece and dive deeper, check out my Patreon and please remember to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so that you can join me again next Sunday when I will be uploading another video and maybe you can paint along with me too while you're at it. Thank you so much for being here. Bye for now.